Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the National Basketball Arena, where we have the last game of our three-game series. So it's the under 16A Subway Ireland Schools Cup, where we're going to have your home team in Galway. That's close to end it down there. We're in a green. They're playing from right to left. And the away team is Pubble Skull Inverse Skena from Kenmare wearing black. So I'm joined here uh, in commentary by Ian Lynch of Carlow IT. And also Ian is the assistant coach under Andy Gill with the uh, Irish under 16 women team. So Ian, do you just want to talk us through about some of the players? As we said, you obviously you probably be more familiar with some of the girls out here today. Yeah, uh, Ken Merd, they have Tanya Salvato. She's currently playing on the squad, actually playing a year up as well. So she's actually under 15 playing in this game here. We'll see her a lot blocking up the middle and definitely attacking the rebounds anyway for Ken Merd. And then on the opposing team, there's Cara McLean, number 10. She'll be definitely looking for some scores anyway. She can light it up, she can. Yeah, and I was just looking through some of the score, and obviously, in the, I said, it is the cup final and how these teams got here. So, in the previous round, Ken Mayer had an all-carry battle where they battled up against Mount Hawk, winning now at a scoreline of 53 points to 37. And you mentioned, there, obviously, Tanya Salvado, you know, she had a big impact in that game, I think, scoring in the high 20s. And also, she wasn't the only one, number eight, Amy Hartigan there. Or sorry, Amy Harrington, so she's the point guard out there from number eight. You'll see her as well, she chipped in with 16 points, so... Maybe two players that I suppose the close to end the team will be looking at. Definitely, anyway. And then also on the Canmare side, they'll definitely be looking at Cara McLean's twin sister, Ava, as well. Uh, not a bad player in her own right either. So I just as we're speaking there of the McLean twin sisters, we have number 10 on the line there, Cara, who is said the Irish International at the moment, on the team with Andy Gale and Ian at the moment. She goes to the line, hoping to get the first score. First one's good. So we noticed uh, throughout the week there, I suppose, we were on commentary, myself and Matt and Fiora, as we were talking about, a lot of players wouldn't be too used to playing in the National Basketball Arena and things like that. But maybe that that's where we're going to see the difference, now when the likes of, I suppose, Cara and Tanya, you know, that they want to get to this level, they want to be playing big games here in the National Basketball Arena. They're probably going to be a bit more used to this type of uh, a tempo and this type of atmosphere. Definitely, uh, back in December, we only came back from an international tournament playing against Belarus, uh, Poland and Lithuania, so they're definitely uh, used to playing against some heavy competition there. Interesting to see as well, both teams opting not to go with a zonal formation defence, and they're coming out straight up man to man to be a bit more aggressive. Foul there goes on number 11, her name is Lucy Hines. That's going to be her first personal foul. And again, as Harrington goes to the line. Spoke with Harrington earlier. Had a really good semi-final. And also, she's chipped in with 16 points in the previous rounds against uh, St. Vincent's and Cork. So she'll be hoping that she can get, tally up a few points to help her team over the line. Some big teams there to come across. Mount Hawk and St. Vincent's. Yeah, I think when you're talking about the... Uh, especially with the A-level and girls and boys, you know, it's a... I suppose it's a pretty competition to win... When you're dealing with you know the top teams, you look at Mount Hawk there, who we seen yesterday, the men's, um, they were in the final, the under 19 men's, Ken Mayer had to get past them, Ken Mayer had to get past St. Vincent's, and as we've seen earlier, they played in the under 19A. So these are schools that are well used to the school basketball and also well used to the national basketball arena. So for Ken Mayer to get here today, it just shows how strong of a team they are. So Cara McLean on the ball. She goes back to Hines, offers up the first three-pointer. Doesn't go, it's a long one. Sarah Taylor comes away with it, the ball just getting knocked out of bounds from her. Sarah's co captain here now today with Tanya Salvato. So, I suppose, Ian, two points after two minutes is all we've offered up. Is uh, this something that you expected to see in this one? Uh, at this age group, you know, it's always tough coming in here because most players, very nervous, going to be a bit shaky in the first opening minute. So it is usual for most of the games today. Anyway, it's low start, and then it should pick up once they kind of settle into the game. Yeah, and on that one there was Tanya Silvana pulling the offensive rebound, scoring. So I suppose just as you said in the pre-game commentary here and at the start of the match, she's going to have a big impact inside, and she does already. And on the other end, as you mentioned, obviously, Ava McLean. 
Stormy mixing these girls up. They look very, very uh, similar out there. Yeah. Number 10 and number 9. Oh, as this only time, one number away from each other as well. Not helping us anyway. <laughs> yeah. But it, <laughs> as this time her sister Cara goes to the basket for two. So again, it's six points to two with five minutes remaining here. Harrington. Ball goes back. Adams with a lovely two. Five minutes to go here in the first quarter. So Don't think you can sit back off Cara there. She's going to fire that all day. We got lucky there. Referee just got a jump ball situation due to the arrow possession. This time it's going to go in the favour of Ken Mayer. Interesting here, we see Klaus to end up opting to go with a full court man to man pressure. And it's worked. Oh. Cara McLean comes away with it. Beg your pardon, Ava McLean comes away with it. She dribbles inside. Draws the foul. Referee Joe Robinson deems is going to be uh, before the shot, so she's going to take it out underneath. Hines with a shot goes up. This one rims out. Jump ball again. Clash down this ball. So just before 16 remaining, we're going to have our first time out. So we'll be back very shortly. Just coming back here, Gosh in the inbound from baseline. Into McLean, doesn't go, but again we see a really good strong rebound by Salvato. Salvato drives, puts it up, this one rims out. McLean comes away with it. Gosh Ender really looking to push the ball here now. Kick out to Hines. It's good, just inside the line, so that's going to be two points for Klaus Ender. Harrington. That's the ball off to Adams. Adams, Harrington takes the rebound. Unfortunately, can't finish. We're seeing a couple of um, easy misses here, I suppose, inside there from uh, Kemmer, like, you know, I suppose looking down there I suppose the coach won't be too happy with those opportunities they're missing yeah they're still looking a little bit nervy in there so they do need to just settle themselves down a bit yeah, get into a bit of a flow of an offense they seem to just be running and running and running and they're not slowing it down a bit because as I mentioned a bit of nerves first time in under 16 cup final so yeah and that last position there there was a charging foul call there on um, one of the players there from Kloshenda so the referee, the referee there is Argabali. He's just going to get him to inbound the ball from the sideline. I, I like the effort there, though. You know. Ball inbound. Adams, Salvato. A bit further from the basket than she'd hoped, huh? 
But on the other end, McLean's going to take her all the way in. And unfortunately, can't get this one to go. And Klaus then is still with that full court press. Harrington, lovely use of the dribble. Lovely crossover, takes it all into the basket. So she's up to four points already. I mentioned she had a really good semi-final. So she looks obviously that, you know, she knows what it takes to win this game today. Salvado with that rebound just as we spoke. Out to Harrington. Adams takes a knock in the back. So she's going to go to the line shooting too. And that's massive. Just that push for the ball, getting the rebound, outlet and quick. That's where they're going to get the easy baskets. Yeah, I suppose obviously the first time out of the afternoon there went to public school uh, in Varsagena. And you think that what the coach Salvado would have been saying to the girls? Because obviously since that time out, no, they've definitely looked the better team within the last two minutes. Just missed that first one there. Definitely, definitely. Uh, they're looking to attack the basket a bit more and settle down when they get stopped from transition there. So they are looking the better team now. As we get one to go. 8-7 here, two minutes, 30, 35 seconds to go in the quarter. McLean on the point. Her sister goes to set a screen. She goes over it. She takes the jump shot. Daverin finds power back door. Lovely score. Did you see there, uh, Ian, when McLean had the ball, I think a lot of the heads on Ken Mayer were paying a lot of attention to her. It allowed her teammate there, Ellen Power, just to go back door, where it was a simple pass. Simple layup, and all she had to do was put the ball in the basket. That's it. They know that she is the one to watch, but just because that, that may be the case, you can't let the other players be open. Here we have Laurie Adams on the point. She's looking to go inside, stolen away. McLean over the top to Daverin. Unfortunately, doesn't go. McLean takes the rebound. That comes back out to her sister, Ava. She takes the long shot. Unfortunately, this doesn't go either. Ball back with Harrington. Bit scrappy there now at the moment. As McLean comes away with it. Excellent adjustment there of the body to make sure there was no contact. And she went up and finished the play. So we've crossed into who lead on a 12 points to 7. Harrington tries to find Salvador closer to the basket. This one doesn't go. Again, the pass is probably going a bit, uh, bit of straight here at the moment from Ken Mayer. Just a little bit. They're trying to make those tough cross-court passes. And as you know, as a coach yourself, you don't want your players making those passes. I suppose, yeah, one thing I would be looking out, uh, looking for um, Ken Mayer at the moment is, as I mentioned, Salvador, you know, had close to 30 points here in the semi-final. In the first quarter here today, right, she only has a tally of two, but we've only seen her take two shots at the basketball. They probably need to do a better job getting the ball inside to her. As you mentioned, she is one of the players currently on the international team with yourself and Andy, so she definitely has the skills, so they need to get her maybe the ball more. When it comes to the cup final, you know, you want to be getting your key players involved as much as possible. Shot goes up, Salvador takes the rebound. Gets the ball to Taylor, her co-captain. Taylor, unfortunately, wanted to make the pass. There was no one there. And McLean comes in with a nice layup. I think that's now, I think that's 14 between both McLeans here for, for a school ender. Again, that cross-court pass that, as a coach, we don't like to see. But it's something that came here, keep going to, as they drive inside. And as they might say, it paid off there for them. And here we come on the fast break. Laurie Adams, Salvador, excellent use of the Euro step. Steps right through the split the defenders. Stretches out to take that little, uh, I suppose. And draws the contact. That foul is going to go on Cara McLean. So that'll be her first personal foul. Oh, 
Salvato misses the first, so we got one second here remaining. So if you're in I would be hoping that they can finish the quarter strong. Free throw goes down. As I say, we got one second remaining. And they're just going to hold it up here, Klostende. End of the first quarter, 16 points of 10 for Klostende. So welcome back for this second quarter. And it's uh, Public Skull Inverse Skeena who start off with the ball. So just looking there at some of the stats from the first quarter, we can see number 10 there, Karen McLean, you know, has six points out of the 16, so a really strong start for her. And also we mentioned her nine assist, you know, she comes in with four points. As Ian said, she will break ten points between them, so a really good start from the Twins. So PSI to inbound, Taylor puts up a shot, doesn't go, Salvato looks to go for the rebound, but just came off the rim wrong for her. You know, that's where they can get some looks because when the shot goes up, a lot of claws to end the players are diving on Salvato in there. So those long rebounds, that's where they should be picking them up. Taylor to inbound. Unfortunately, Joe Robbins calls uh, a strange one, Ian. You, was you don't see that call that much, uh, that travel on the inbound there. Got to keep the two feet planted there when you're making that, uh, that inbound pass. So just to bring, I suppose, bring the rule book into it, after a score from an out of bounds on the baseline, you are allowed to take a couple of steps when you're making that inbound pass. But after a violation call, so when the ball is from the sideline or even underneath after the violation, unfortunately, you're not allowed to walk the sideline or walk the inline. And that time there, I think, uh, Sarah Taylor, that will be a learning experience for her. Yeah, and then we just saw there a moment ago, Car McLean once again getting to the rim. So on the back right hand corner here is your screen, you can see the the let's go Ken Mayer signs up in the air and the go PSI. As they can see their team trail here, 18 points to 10. So they're trying to give them a bit of a lift because you know, there's no denying we've seen some really good sport support from all schools this week. In particular, if I was to say this game, there's probably a bit more PSI fans here than uh, close to end at the moment. Salvato, ball gets knocked away. P 
Taylor to inbound. The ball gets in there. Laurie Adams, this one doesn't go. Taylor comes away with the rebound again. Tries to find Saldado. But who else? But McLean comes away with it. Ball over the top to Walsh. We had a change of possession in the end line there, but referee Joe Robinson deems that um, Pubble's got inverse gain a step out of bounds. So this is going to be a cross to end the ball to work the ball in. They get the ball inside. Walsh, a nice little layup there for two. So again, stretches the lead back out to 10. Laurie Adams. Excellent pass inside to Harrington. So, you know, obviously, second, starting the second quarter, end of stretch lead out of 10. Um, what do you think the coaching staff of PSI will be looking to talk about within this timeout? Well, on defence, anyway, they've got to start clogging up the middle. You might see them come out into a 2 3 zone or 2 1 2 so they can stop shots around the rim. Offensively, they're just a bit unlucky at the moment. Things just aren't going in for them. They're getting second looks. They're getting third looks even. Just not able to make. Just not able to finish in these tough rims. If anyone has played there before, they'd know. Tough, tough rims of scoring. So we're going to be back very shortly after this timeout. Just coming back here, two free throws for Harrington. He misses the first. Makes the second. We'll see if Anton has changed up a bit defensively from Kenmare. It's looking like they're, they're sticking to their guns a little bit, staying in man to man. I think what's kind of uh, killed Khmer their times is they really have to work hard to score the basketball. Where Klaus to end that have been lucky enough that they've got a couple of fast break points. And some of those fast break points have come on a turnover for Khmer. Just as I gave a commentator's curse there on number eight, Amy Harrington, as she pushes the ball out over the line. And that's it. Like We, we kind of teach players to do plays and everything, but the best play you can get is just a transition layup. If you get that at all time, you'll take it. So Katie Betty here is on the point. Hanny puts up a three, unfortunately that was a goal. Salvato with another rebound. She unfortunately lost possession of that one there. Referee Joe Robinson deems that there was a bit of contact there, so he's going to call a foul on that. Oh, that's an interesting foul there, because as I'm looking across there now at the, the, as it lights up in front of us, that's actually going to be her second foul. So with 5.49 still remaining in the half, do you think they're going to leave Salvato in the, in this, or will they take a chance to try and get her a bit of a rest? I don't know. It might. Uh, for me, I'd probably keep her in there. Uh, if she does pick up the third, though, definitely, definitely whip her out then. But uh, I'd keep her in for the moment. And as she's in there, she pulls an offensive rebound and, and a goes. score. Back. I suppose it's an interesting one. You know, maybe if you if you were the team who were winning. I had a 7 to 10 point advantage and you had someone who picked up two folds. You yeah, might try to give him a minute. Yeah, mi it might give him a minute, play it a bit safe, you know. In this situation, they are still trailing here, 20 points, 13. Salvador, as you mentioned there, had a really good semi-final. So, her mother being the coach, she knows exactly what her she can do. 
Definitely, and I believe she coaches her in club side as well, so she'll know her inside and out and how she plays. As Taylor comes away with it, Harrington, and we're starting to see Kemmer looking to push the ball just as we talked about that fast break. Our free Joe Robinson's going to call a jump ball, and with that, we're going to have a close end the ball. And also, we're going to have Kosh Enders coach is going to call a timeout with 4.44 remaining. We're back now. Klostenda and Ken Mare. 20 to 15 to Klostenda. And and since the uh, I'd say for the second second quarter nearly they've swapped places now. You see Ken Mare pushing the ball a bit more. Klostenda finishing isn't great around the rim right now, so it's almost a reversal there from the first quarter. Yeah, I can see Klostenda call that last time out, and they could see that they've you know given up. They were winning at 20 points to 10, so they've given up five points unanswered. I suppose coach Kyle Walsh there from just uh, settling along with the girls and maybe try and get back to what they were doing. You know, the McLean sisters, as we mentioned there, had 10 points in the opening quarter. Really, really strong. And uh, probably yet to feature hair as much in this quarter. So he'll be looking to get a bit more out of them. Taylor comes away on the point. But we've seen so far as well, Ken Mayer, they're still getting their second and third chances around the rim, so... I'd say probably boxing out might have been a big point of emphasis there for Coach Carl Walsh. Yeah, as we can see there, looking down there, number 10, Karen McLean. She did a really good job on the box out there on Tanya Salvado. As soon as the shot went up, she made sure she phoned Salvado, ensuring that Salvado wasn't going to get another opportunity. And there we go, Karen McLean cutting down the lane, finishing for another two points. Harrington drives aside, good use of the ball screen. Finds Salvado, puts it on the deck inside. She wanted a bit of contact. Really nice up and under play by herself. Uh, really good to see there, Ian. You know, a lot of players when they you know when they take that contact on the first play, their first intention might be to turn to look at the referee or maybe give up on the play. She didn't. She worked hard to get it and she put the ball in the basket. So really nice play from her. Definitely great to see. Because when, play, when players put the head down and look at the ref, they're immediately taken out of the game then. Ava McLean drives inside, ball back to power. Shot goes up from Webb. McLean does well to get it. She's kind of been knocked over there. Referee sees nothing wrong with that one. And Cara McLean back on the ball. Webb offers up another three-pointer. He spoke about the box out so there. You know, three offensive rebounds in a row for Klosh Denda. So maybe Pubble Skull and Verschkena will have to do maybe a better job on that. A little bit. They just look to be jumping with them at the moment. Thinking they can outsize them or out-athlete them, but... As, as a lot of players know, a good body on a player creates a lot more space to go get that ball. 
McLean puts a shot up and again another offensive rebound. And I suppose, look, this is under 16A basketball. If you're going to give a team four attempts to score the basketball, you know, give them enough shots, they eventually will score. Taylor finds Salvato. Ball gets stripped away by Power. Salvato rushing back here in defense. Salvato blocks the ball, but unfortunately not what referee has seen there. So he spoke with that dreaded third foul. So that's going to be her third foul there now. Yeah, the coach has a decision here to make. Um, personally, myself, she'd be coming out just to sit for the rest of the quarter to save her. As the first one goes in for Ellen Power. I suppose uh, Tanya Salvato will be a bit disappointed with that one there because... Look, from here, it looked as if, you know, she didn't really challenge it much. She used her height, stood up, and she just kind of blocked the ball. But referee deemed that there was too much contact on it. And Mayor, shot clock winding down. Ooh. And lucky there from Klaus Fender. Almost had them with a 24 second. And as he called it, Salvato coming out, protecting her for that fourth foul. And just one thing to point out here, you might notice there on the scoreboard on screen, it's showing 27 plays 19. Just in fact, the score actually is 27. Clash Dana plays 17. So our on screen scoreboard there now at the moment is just slightly ahead. But it work to get that. Uh, that will be forked there now in the next couple of moments. Clash Dana pushing the ball. Can't get the layup to go. So with one ten remaining in the half, we're back to correct score now on both scoreboard and for everyone at home. It's 27 clash in the play 17. Public score inverse Skena. As you mentioned, Salvador goes to the bench on three fouls. So Public score inverse Skena will be looking to finish this quarter. Be down 10 points here now with your main score on the bench. They won't want this to go any further than 10 there now, Ian, really, will they? Definitely not, no, they've, at the moment, they don't really have that inside threat to go to on offense. So it's going to have to be the guards to step up here. I'd say they'll be looking to Harrington a bit to get uh, to get them going a bit. And on the other end, Betty comes away with it. Power with a really nice one-two step inside. Referee Joe Robinson deems there's a bit too much contact. So she's going to find herself going to the line, giving her ch team, a ch giving herself a chance to stretch this lead even further. She's always going to get that call. You see that hand just drop as she came in. If that happens, the referee's going to call that all the time. First free throw, it's the back of the ring. Free throw didn't go, but McLean got straight after the rebound. And again, it's those second and third opportunities. I think if we were looking down at a stat sheet, now we'd definitely be noticing that Clash to end uh, have definitely probably taken more shots than uh, Public Skull Shkena, like in this opening half. And it's probably down to them creating those second shot opportunities. As I, as I said, players just trying to jump with each other. I guess it might be a bit old fashioned to go and get a body on a player. <laughs> Clean coming away with the rebound there. She goes all the way to the basket herself. Little John takes the rebound. Again, power draws the foul, and we're looking over at that scoreboard area. We can see the red marker is up. So it does mean that they are in the penalty. So even though the foul wasn't on a shooting foul, it's going to be two shots here in open cost in there.
Power misses the first. Just 15 seconds here remaining. It's so interesting to see. Can school off from Camer? Can they get the ball? They got 14.7 remaining. Let's see, can they get a score? Let's bring this from a 12 point game down to a 10. This press that Klaus Stenn have put on has really thrown them out of out of what they want to do, Ken there. Adams to Little John. Daly. This one doesn't go. Clock winds down. 1-0 and a half time. It's Klaus Stenn, uh, 29. Pobelskall in Verschkena, 17. We'll be back very shortly for the second half.
And we're back now for the start of the second half. Uh, Kalash to end it, 29 points to Pubble School Inver Skiena, uh, 17 points. And Salvato introduced back into the game and draws the early foul, getting two free throws coming up here. So Ian, just looking there at some of the stats there at half time, as mentioned Salvato back in the game. Of the 17 points, you know, she's been looking up. She's actually had eight of those points, so a really key player for her team to make sure she's in there. And on the other end, then, we spoke about the twins, Cara and Ava. So between them, they have a total of 16 points, with Cara having 10 and Ava having six. So we can really see some first-half standout performances there. So it'll be interesting to see if these performers can keep going, or maybe you never know, somebody else step up and help their team out. There we go. Offensive rebounds again. That is, we could just call this game offensive rebound. That's all that's happening right now. I think both coaches will be looking to try and, you know, maybe limit those shot opportunities. As McLean on the inside there, unfortunately that one doesn't go. Ball over the top to Salvado. And here we are out and running with Harrington. Oh, gets called for the offensive foul, the push off there. So a really strong start there by um, Infar Shkana there. But unfortunately that offensive foul there might just take him out of the rhythm. And again, Ava McLean on the inside. She puts the ball in the basket there for her school. Making it 31 points, plays 20. Long outlet there, Little John. The Daly, back to Harrington. Harrington, Little John. Again, just a bit aggressive there by um, Davron there on the defence. So the referee, Zara Gabali, just feels that it's going to be a pushing foul. Salvaro. Just time she attempts to drive at the basket. Takes the contact, and she's going to go to the line shooting too. So she's really kind of changed up her game now early on the second half. At the first half, we've seen a lot of her, I suppose, looking to get the offensive rebounds and not show for the ball as much. And she had a bit of luck scoring in that kind of a formation. Where now, the second half, we definitely see her coming to the high post to get the ball. Is that something that her coach and also her mother would have been telling her to do at halftime? Definitely, because most, I presume, the other team are usually just looking at her around the rim, probably stepping off her a bit so they're not expecting that little drive, and she can make that around the rim as well. So it's definitely, it's definitely in her locker anyway that she can use. This time, unfortunately, Salvador goes zero for two. You see power coming back into the game now as well for Klaus to end it. So a bit of pressure there put on by uh, Public Scott Inverse again, huh? Really nice step through there. Forty just one doesn't go, but the offensive rebound does go. Daly on the inside, takes a bit of contact, and already, after a minute and 30 seconds, that's actually going to be the fourth team foul. So it could be a, a quarter of free throws here for Public Scott Inverse again, if they can continue to be aggressive. If, if you're the coach of Public School there, you'd be happy with that right now. Bit of a clock malfunction there. Salvato drives aside. It was actually two players around that time. So this time the clock goes off for the correct reason. And it's for a substitution. There's number six. Davran just checks out of the game. That was her second foul she picked up there. So maybe it's just a tactical decision there by Kyle Walsh. Just to make sure that he is... Not have any players in foul trouble coming into this last quarter. Hanny puts up a lovely long two-pointer. We've seen a lot of layups, a lot of fast break scores in, uh, in this game. So it's really nice to see there that long two just showing that Klaus Dender will able to shoot the ball. It's Harrington. Lovely use of the dribble steps inside. Two and four, she doesn't go. But Power won't mind. She comes away on the break. And then even Walsh there at the finish. 
Yeah, we spoke a lot about that fast break basketball there, and we've seen it there now again. Klaus Stenda, as soon as they get it, they get the rebound, and then they have players, as we see them here now, maybe like a four on two break at the moment. Power drives inside. Lovely use of the layup. And just like that, three consecutive scores. What was, you know, a nine point game. And now we're out to an 80. Sorry, Big Heart, now we're out to a 17 point game. And that's Walsh's uh, fourth foul, so she's going to be coming out of the game now. PSI now going to the line, and that's what they can get. Any, any foul for the rest of the quarter? Two free throws. So they'll come up short now on the last three there free throws. So if they are going to have the luxury of getting the line, they need to make sure that they're knocking them down. McLean drives aside, uses her left hand this time. Harrington comes away with the steal, takes a bit of contact. She gets up and continues on. Daly, Salvato, that cross court pass that they like to throw. Adams with a nice jump shot from the elbow. Salvato does well to pull down that offensive rebound. Unfortunately for her, the ball doesn't drop. Bit of contact there, but McLean's able to take it away. And again, Hanny, sorry, big, yeah, Hanny again just showing okay that she does have that outside shot. And knocking it down, really helping other team. So public school inverse game now. We really want to get a hold on their offense here now. Is they trail 31? Sorry, big hard 39 plays 21. With four minutes here remaining in your third. And that's as I said there. Klaus Dende constantly with players up on the fast break. Have the extra player there to pick up the offensive rebound and lay it back in. I think that's a bit of a sign of tiredness there from Salvato. You know, we've seen there she missed one or two shots there that she probably normally would get. You know, it's tough when uh, there's a, a lot of aggressive defenders out there for Enda and they're just making, they're making the job hard for her. She really has to work for every offensive rebound she gets. Yeah, anytime she gets the ball down low, they're just collapsing on her. So we have a timeout here. And we're back now. Klaus to end the ball. 41 21 to Klaus to end Aiden McLean with the driving kick. Can't get it to go. They find Harrington on the break. Does well to keep the ball in play. But it's McLean who's the first to respond to it. She goes up to Hanny. Hanny's had a really strong uh, third quarter here now. Clocking up four points for her team. Hackett takes the rebound on the inside. And Carr there drawing the foul. So 
Oh, I think referee Joe Robinson just indicating there that the foe was on the uh, the foe was actually on the floor before a shot went up. So and they're going to take the ball out underneath. McLean drives inside, finds a Sullivan from the free throw line, and again some really nice outside shooting we're here at sea from Clostenda. Yeah, Clostenda definitely a little bit more comfortable in taking those about 15 to 20 foot jump shots. Taylor drives the side, ball gets knocked out of bounds, so she want to get the ball back on that one. And again, we have Betty and Power checking back in for Clostenda. And the two twins after really impressive first three quarters. We're going to get a bit of a rest with 2.32 here remaining in the third. So a good substitution by the coach. They're seeing they have a 22 point lead. You can get their main players out there, get a bit of a rest, and have them ready then for the last quarter, I suppose, just to get this job over the line. And we can see here, Clostenda really packing it in inside that paint area there. So any passes there is just being, being uh, trapped and then jump balls here. So Clostenda the ball. Betty inside to Hackett. Hanny, we've seen her knock down one shot. She goes to Hackett. She's also knocked down one before. So that's her foot takes her to the four points. So really nice jump shot there. It's been a really strong uh, third quarter here from Clash End, uh, Ian really hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. And we can see that it's still their full court defences. It, it's it's causing a lot of trouble here for Ken Mayer. Yeah, so they have 16 points racked up in total. They're now already in six minutes of play. So when you consider uh, Pubble Skull inverse gain out of 21 in total, and Enda have managed to do 16 in the last six minutes, it just shows that, you know, we spoke about how teams were slow to start this game, and, you know, see, you mentioned that, you know, we had, what, two points combined after the first two or three minutes. But the last six minutes, Clash they have definitely got used to these baskets here. Definitely, and, and the difference is, if you remember... Uh, P PSI, they they had um, they had clashed end on Team Fells only two minutes into the quarter, and they they haven't really capitalised on uh, getting to the line since. As Hackett makes it three for three for herself in this third quarter. So again, just to show us there, obviously uh, with the McLean twins having a quick rest at the moment, you know they've got ten points there from players coming off the bench, which is really really strong. Yeah, Should always good to have depth within a team, you know. As Harrington drives the side there, the crowd give a good response. Just letting the PSI uh, team know that, look, we're girls, we're still behind you. So hopefully you can keep going and make this last quarter a bit interesting. Great defensive effort there by Harrington to get the steal. And then offensive rebound again. So Hackett looking to get a shot up again. Power drives inside. She knew Salvador couldn't really uh, be as aggressive on that block, so she did a really good job of finishing the play. Power having a good game in herself as well for the past uh, for these three quarters. That aggressive clash then the defense causing the turnover there. Again, as the clock winds down, we got seven, six, and five, four. Shot goes up. That will do. At the end of three, it's 49 plus 23. We'll be back in one minute for your last quarter.
And we're back now for the final quarter in the 16A uh, girls final here. Class to end the currently up 49 to 23 for Pubble Skull in Verschkina. And again, as we look down there, it's interesting we see the twins, the Ava and Karen McLean, still currently sitting on the bench. So maybe the coach is just trying to get everyone in and out there. Keep the team playing well. You know, they had some, they were all on some fresh legs, which made them have a really good, strong third quarter. Little John unable to get the two pointer bank to go. Well, oh, Sullivan steps out over the line, so still, yes, I ball. Touch there by Betty. Stays down this end. There you go, little John with the two. Just that pace there that Klaus then to play with is pretty impressive. And as you said, that's the that's a difference there with the depth, able to get uh, both McLean's off to bring in fresh players. They're able to keep that intensity high and that's pace up. Taylor comes away with the rebound. Good job there by Webb, able to save that ball and keep it for her team. Power recycles the ball back out to Webb. Can't get it to go. Some passes just going astray here. I think Ken Mayer just need to slow things down a little bit and settle back into the game. Attempt unable to get it. And little John picks up the ball, gets to Harrington. Oh, these unforgiving rims. Unfortunate there, can't get it to go. Yeah, it's good to see that I suppose that Paul is going to be Or, you know, keep going and playing hard, even though the deficit is obviously 20 plus. They had some really good wins to get here, and at the end of the day, this is the under 16 A final. It can only be one winner. So 20, it's 22 points, Def is a hair out the moment. Yeah. So hopefully they can keep going, just plug it away at this lead and just give a good effort from themselves because it's a really good accomplishment. As we mentioned, some of the teams you have to get past to get to the under 16 air final. That's it. And you can see they've even upped the intensity a bit more now. They've put on a full court press, see if they can try and get some easy baskets back and hopefully cut the deficit a little bit at least. As we look down there, Salvador has gone back to the subs bench, so she's going to look to get back into the action here. A bit too aggressive there by Taylor. Salvato back in for Ken Mayer, and then McLean, Hines, and Dooley in for Costa Enda. So, four and a half remaining, 51 plays 27. Harrington drives inside. Salvato, again, two bodies around her, so she's she knows she's not going to get that easy basket. Adams, Harrington. 
was a good option there. And gets that shot to go. 51 29, the clash to end it. Can't get the layup to go. Laurie Adams to Harrington. Harrington goes aggressive along the baseline. Takes a bit of contact, so she's going to go take the ball out underneath for her team. Again, obviously, we're watching the under 16A Subway All Ireland Schools Cup, where obviously the two top teams at under 16 schools basketball are battling out. But this weekend, we have the Hula Hoops National Cup on here in the National Basketball Arena all weekend. So again, all games are going to be covered from Friday evening all day Saturday and Sunday. We have all games are going to be covered uh, via the Basketball Ireland YouTube channel. So you can tune in and watch at some of these uh, players who will be playing at the club level. And also, Saturday evening we have the Men's National Cup final, which is live on TG Gar. And also Sunday at 5.30 we have the Women's Super League. So again, a level that some of these uh, players eventually will aspire to play at. Davrin just checking back into the game here. Saldado pulls away the rebound. Harrington now looking to move the ball around Adams can't get the jump shot to go McLean pushing the ball well it's a good take and two free throws coming up here for Grace Webb that's a fourth foul there on Harrington as well Webb can't get the first to go. Two minutes 30 here left in the fourth quarter. Can't get the second to go either. Harrington pulls the rebound away. Oh, and that's good defense there by Davern. Managing to stop that fast break layup by tipping it out of bounds. So Ian, just under two and a half minutes here remaining as Salvador looks to drive to the basket for her team. Draws the foul. Um, obviously, with all these school cup games, we always have to have a, a, what we call it, it's the subway, the most valuable player in the game. So in today's game, you know, who for you, I suppose, will be the most valuable player out in the court today? For me, oh, it's got to be a toss-up. Um, Kara's obviously playing very well for Klosh then, uh, but then you also have Power and her twin sister, Ava. Um, it's got to be close for me right now, though. Um, if I had to call someone, it might be Kara. Um, and Tanya there making that second free throw. Yeah, what, about, what about yourself? Who would you go for? Yeah, this I think game? we did have some, you know, I suppose good performances there. Look, I suppose we'll talk about the team trailing at the moment. Um, obviously, Tanya Salvada, you know, disappointed with the number of fouls, but she still had a really good afternoon. Not maybe as happy as she would want did, but. Had a decent afternoon, then obviously Harrington as well. And I suppose Clash to end that you mentioned there. The twins, in particular, I suppose Cara there, as she tots up her total to 14 points, which is a really good score and open for her, even though she sat a lot of the third quarter. In particular, her sister as well, Ava, and as you mentioned, uh, Ellen Power. So again, there was probably a lot of performances, but I suppose the one we probably could agree on, um, Cara McLean there, number 10. I know you mentioned there in pre game, obviously, she was one to watch currently involved with the Irish team with yourself and Andy Gill so she's really stepped up for her school today you know with 
130 remaining. She's on 14 points already. So let's see if she can rock up another few points for her school. There we go. Harrington just can't get it to go there. Unlucky there. There we go. Carr pushing the ball. That's the fifth foul there on Karen McLean, so she's going to go to the bench. I think she's probably done enough today. Um, so I wouldn't be too worried about that. And her twin sister, Ava, comes back in for her. Tanya still battling hard there, picking up the second chance opportunity. And gets the and one play. So, just a little bit over one minute to go in this game. Cross to end the lead. 53 to 33. And Tanya converts on the old fashioned three point play. Hines with the ball up top, gets to McLean. Webb with the shot, no good, and Harrington takes it. Gets it up the court quickly, but she just can't control the ball, unfortunately, Mayhew. Lost end to come away with the ball. Harrington, really good to see that the girls are right going all the way to the end. And Sebastian Salvato. Again, it was that shot just summed up her night there, really, you know, isn't it? Kind of an in and out. She's a lot of effort. She's trying really hard. Just unfortunately, the shots aren't dropping. Yeah. And it's the same for Harrington gets that one to go, but she's had a similar day. Getting down the middle of the lane, but unfortunately just can't get the layup. Couldn't get the layups to go today. And it's just about time here. Two seconds to go here. And that'll be it here. Uh, Klasha and have come away with the win there for the under 16A schools girls cup, uh, Subway Cup. It was 53-36, and commiserations to uh, Pubble School in Ver Schiena. Um, that'll be all here for myself, Ian Lynch, and uh, Danny O'Mahony. Uh, thank you all for listening in. And